How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant, part 12. Drilling the chimney mounting and fitting it to the boiler cap. Normally I would show this shot right at the end of the video, but in this case I'm making an exception and showing it at the beginning. As you can see, it is spinning round, and this mirrors the fact that I did a lot of this work on a rotary table. I've had this rotary table for quite a long time, ages in fact, and it's been bolted to the milling table for a long, long time. But I never really got round to buying an adapter so I could mount a chuck on it. Until now, that is, and I have an adapter which takes the chucks that fit to my small Boxford lathe. And as you can clearly see, this is a four-jaw chuck I have fitted to the rotary table, and this shot of the two mounting lugs on the angle plate means that you can mount the rotary table on a horizontal or vertical plane. And mounted horizontally on the milling table, it would make quite a good dividing head. Rotary tables similar to this one come in many shapes and sizes. This is actually a very old rotary table and a very good quality one. Some of them are not strong and they rattle about and move around. This one is very firm. And with this four jaw chuck mounted on it, it's an ideal platform for milling and drilling operations, which both can be carried out on the same machine. This is a very ancient Taiwanese milling machine that I use. This piece of scrap metal that I put in the chuck is just a test piece. I'm going to drill some holes in it, and I'm using a dial test indicator to check the concentricity of it. If the piece of metal that you're working on is not in the centre and does not rotate truly, relative to the position of the drill, then the holes that you're going to drill in the component will not be in the right place. So a good quality dial test indicator is a must in the workshop. The dial test indicator that I have has a magnetic base, which allows it to stick very firmly to either a lathe bed or the milling table. And it also makes it more difficult to throw the stupid thing across the workshop when you cannot get the work to run concentrically. But of course we don't do that, do we? You do need practice with a dial test indicator to make it work for you. And this is where it gets clever. Around the outside edge of the rotary table are a load of numbers, going from zero back to zero in 360 degree increments. So this is how it works. You would start on zero, for instance, and then you position the drill to drill a hole in the work that's held in the chuck at the top of the rotary table at the zero point. You do of course need to use a centre drill for this, because if you use a large twist drill it will wander all over the place. So by first of all drilling a hole at the zero point, then winding the handle so that the drill moves on to 90, then moving the handle again so the drill moves on to 180, and finally moving the handle once again until you reach the 270 mark, you will end up with four very accurately drilled centre holes in the piece of metal you're working on. This piece of metal is very much like a cylinder cover for a steam locomotive. It actually came off an old engraving machine, I do believe. Anyway, if you want to drill eight holes around the edge, you just have to use 45 as the number, not 90. So it's zero for the first one, then 45, then 90, then 135, then 225, and then 270, and then 315, and finally back to zero, which of course is 360. All these numbers made me go a little mad, so I put a milling cutter in the chuck, and then proceeded to just have a mess about with it. The best way to learn how to use something is to mess about with it and see what its capabilities and limitations are. Obviously, to do this job, I think I would prefer to put it in the lathe and get a really nice turn finish. The normal way of drilling steam pots in a cylinder is to file a 45 degree angle and then put the drill in and drill through to the ports. But this looks a lot neater. It's very simple to do. You just put the cylinder in the chuck and advance the tool and just move between the same two numbers and you get a nice little recess. Well, that's the demo over with. Now I need to work on the real thing. This is the chimney mount that holds the superheater and I need to drill some holes around the flange so that I can bolt it onto the top cap of the boiler. So, a quick check for concentricity with the DTI, and then it's time to spot the holes around the edge of the flange. Eight holes should be okay, so I'm using 45 as the number, and multiples of 45 give me eight equidistantly centred holes around the flange. 
The good thing about using a rotary table is no marking out is required as long as you know where to put the drill. And in no time at all I have centre drilled holes, all eight of them, around the flange. And then all I have to do is drill the holes all the way through using a twist drill. This is an eighth of an inch diameter twist drill. This clip shows the chimney mount with all the fittings removed. I should have done this before I drilled it really. But I was just too excited because I was using my new rotary table. But anyway, here it is. The first thing to do is to position the chimney mount on the boiler top cap, making sure that the centre hole for the blower is aligned with the centre hole in the top cap. And then on my pedestal drill, I drill one hole all the way through the top cap. I was using the chimney mount as a guide, and now I have a centre mark, so I can drill all the way through the top cap. And then through this hole, I bolt the chimney mount to the top cap. And then I can drill the rest of the holes all the way through the top cap using the chimney mount as a jig to keep them accurate. In this clip I'm using some 6BA brass nuts to tighten the bolts through the holes. That's enough of the technical stuff for the moment. Let's all take our medication in this varnishing intermission. And to accompany this varnishing intermission, here is some music I wrote quite a lot of years ago for a production of Alice in Wonderland by a local theatre group but unfortunately they said they couldn't use it because it frightened the children and they were running out crying. Ah, that's better. I feel much more relaxed now. Everything's lining up properly now that the boiler cap is fitted to the top of the boiler. The only problem is, I don't think it looks right for the style I'm trying to achieve with this boiler. So I removed the top cap and I removed one of the bolts. And then I put the entire assembly back into the rotary table. And I lined up the centre drill with this first hole. And then started to drill holes in between the holes I already had. Not quite at this speed, this of course is speeded up. And what I thought I would try, rather than following the graduations around the edge of the rotary table, I thought I would just try spotting them by eye and see how accurate I can get it. And when I used the twist drill to drill through on the points made by the centre drill, it was pretty accurate. Not perfect, but I was trying not to achieve a CNC machined look to the model. This is a view from the top of the chimney, which of course needs quite a bit more polishing up yet. Down to the chimney support and the superheater support. And look at all those nuts. And I quite like the look of this. This will be fine. A bit over the top, yes I admit that, but nice. And so for a first attempt with a rotary table, and believe me, after all these years, this is the first time I've ever used one. I've always marked out things like this the hard way. That's it for now, and as usual, in a roundabout way, I thank you for watching, and I hope you found it useful.